Motor neuron disease, otherwise known as amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, is the name given to a group of diseases in which the nerve cells, neurons, controlling the muscles that enable us to move around, speak, swallow and breathe fail to work normally. Recent statistics estimate there are approximately 1,200 people in Australia currently diagnosed with MND, with about 400 new diagnoses each year at the average age of 50. MND is a fatal neurodegenerative disease. It is characterised by the onset of symptoms and signs of degeneration of primarily the upper and lower motor neurons. This presentation will explain the cause, development and symptoms of MMD, how the disease affects movement and control of the body, what treatments or interventions are available and what effect exercise can have. Up to 90% of all MMD cases occur without family history. This is known as sporadic MMD and about 10% of cases are familial MMD. MND involves a complex process of neuronal degeneration. In familial MND, several genetic alterations may be involved in motor neuron injury. However, less is known about the genetic and environmental factors involved in the more common sporadic form of the disease. A person affected by MND typically develops a combination of upper and lower motor neuron signs, with progressive muscle weakness and wasting, usually accompanied by pathologically brisk reflexes, eventually involving the limb and bulbar muscles. There are varying types of MND and different progressive stages of the disease. The picture on the right shows the different sections of the body that are each affected. These include the bulbar, cervical, thoracic and lumbar regions. The current understanding of the etiology of MND is that there may be a complex interplay between multiple mechanisms, including genetic factors, oxidative stress, excitotoxicity, protein aggregation and damage to critical cellular processes including axonal transport and organelles such as mitochondria. However, the ideology of sporadic MND is largely unknown. There has been ample amount of research that suggests prolonged heavy cigarette smoking and exposure to organic solvents and heavy metals are modifiable risk factors for MND. However, further research is required in order to prove these hypotheses. Current understandings of MND revolve around the excitatory hypotheses of glutamate, where a neurotransmitter which has the potential to cause flooding of calcium ions in the postsynaptic motor neurons, mitochondrial dysfunction, and the formation of reactive oxygen species and proteases are responsible for the death of cells in the motor fibres. Here is a simplified picture of the pathophysiology in MND that shows the process from excitotoxicity through to neural or axonal cell death. The clinical spectrum in MND results from a degeneration of upper motor neurons in the motor cortex, lower motor neurons of the brainstem and spinal cord, or both. MND is relentlessly progressive. 50% of patients die within 30 months of the onset of symptoms and about 20% of patients survive between 5 years and 10 years after symptom onset. MND leads to the loss of motor neurons in the cortex, brainstem and spinal cord, manifested by upper and lower motor neuron signs and symptoms affecting bulbar limb and respiratory musculature. The effect of movement control starts with early symptoms including fasciculations, cramps, tight and stiff muscles from spasticity, muscle weakness affecting an arm or leg, slurred and nasal speech, or difficulty chewing or swallowing. Symptoms of upper motor neuron involvement include spasticity and exaggerated reflexes, including hyperflexia. Symptoms of lower motor neuron degeneration include muscle weakness and atrophy, muscle cramps and fasciculations. The picture to the right shows the signs and symptoms of upper and lower motor neuron dysfunction in motor neuron disease, with the upper motor neuron dysfunction showing bulba effects, moderate weakness, spasticity, hyperflexia and extensor plantar reflexes, and the lower motor neuron dysfunction showing severe weakness, fasciculations, muscle cramps, muscle hypotonicity, muscle atrophy, 
and hyporeflexia. According to Bauman, Talbot and Turner, the management of MND in recent years has improved significantly and that whilst there is no current cure, MND is not untreatable. However, Lee et al. state that treatments are only able to help prolong life and do not reverse weakness or slow down progression. Because of this, great burden is often placed on caregivers and family of someone suffering from MND as a result of the diagnosis experience, assisted ventilation, cognitive changes, the cost involved in care, and end-of-life decision-making. Increasing evidence found that chronic glutamate excitotoxicity may accumulate to toxic levels and contribute to neural death in MND. This led to the drug Reluzol being trialled where it was found to have complex effects but appeared to block the presynaptic release of glutamate. Currently the drug is approved in the USA, Australia, Canada and in many European countries. However, there is concerns that the drug is very expensive and merely prolongs life for a short time without improving any symptoms of the disease. Therefore, it is often argued that the benefits of the drug don't outweigh the costs. In this diagram, you can see the effect that the drug Reluzol has by blocking the voltage-gated ion channels and therefore inhibiting the glutamate release. There is a wide range of treatments for the care of MND as listed by Kieran et al. These include orthotics, physiotherapy, adaptive aids, assessment by a speech therapist and dietitian, safe swallowing techniques and modified diet, insertion of a gastrostomy tube, ventilatory support, morphine, chest physiotherapy, suction machine, manually assisted coughing techniques, muscle relaxants, anticonvulsants, repositioning and pressure area care, opioid drugs, pressure relieving cushions and mattress, assessment by speech pathologist, communication aids, educating family and caregivers, explaining symptomology to caregivers and family, and antidepressant therapies, as well as anticholinergic drugs, botulinum toxin injections, radiation of salivary glands, mouth care products, natural remedies, ensuring adequate hydration, saline nebulizers, suctioning of the mouth, mouth care, antitriptyline, dexomethorphan, counselling, antidepressants, treating underlying problems, respiratory review, dietary changes and regular oral appointments. A common question of physicians and patients is the effect of exercise on MND. There are theoretical reasons to suggest that excess exercise may be deleterious to compromise motor nerve and muscle. But equally, there are the normal benefits of exercise on nerve and muscle growth and sustainability. Florence explains that weak muscles from MND can be damaged if overworked during exercise because it is already functioning close to its maximal limits. Because of this, some experts have discouraged exercise programs for people with MND. However, if a person with MND is not active, deconditioning and weakness from lack of use occurs on top of the deconditioning and weakness caused by the disease itself. Research by Drory et al. found that moderate regular physical activity has a mild temporary positive effect on motor deficient and disability fatigue and health related quality of life of patients with MND. Therefore, Drory et al. recommends that the performance of moderate physical activity should be encouraged. Suitable exercise for MND includes gentle, passive and therapeutic exercise. Florence found that this type of exercise had no negative effect. In conclusion, there is still a great deal to understand about the cause of and treatments suitable for motor neuron disease. What is known is that only a small amount of cases, around 10%, are hereditary, with most cases being sporadic and the cause unknown. MND is characterised by the degeneration of primarily the upper and lower motor neurons, which cause muscles cramps, spasticity, hyporeflexia, hyporeflexia, muscle weakness, muscle atrophy, and fasciculations. Most treatments help relieve pain and discomfort with the drug Reluzol, proving to extend the life of MND sufferers. However, no treatments seem to prevent or reverse the effects of MND. 
Exercise can be valuable in avoiding further muscle degeneration, although exercise programs can be difficult to implement in severe cases of MND. Most exercise used to treat MND is therapeutic and is aimed at allowing the patient to remain as active as possible. In recent years, awareness has increased significantly about MND. This is valuable as there is still a lot of research needed to help cure, prevent and treat MND.